Hi, in this video, what we are going to do is we are going to construct a 99% confidence interval. For this situation, we have a random sample of 20 people with a mean commute time of 33.7 minutes and a sample standard deviation of 6.8 minutes. Assume the population commute time is normally distributed. So there's a couple keywords in here. I already highlighted one of them, the sample. Um, that tells us what kind of confidence interval that we are going to create. So since I didn't tell you up here what confidence interval, um, the thing that we are looking for is we are looking for a mean commute time. So we're trying to figure out, um, based on this sample, what we feel the mean, the population mean commute time is. And for this, it tells us that we have a sample standard deviation. So there's a key difference between the two intervals that can be created for the mean. Um, one of the intervals is the Z interval, and the other one is the T interval. And the difference comes from which type of standard deviation you have. Since we have the sample standard deviation, and we do not have the population standard deviation. This right here tells us that we would use the T interval. The T interval is based on the T distribution, which is a family of models that look very similar to uh, the normal model, but they give us a little more flexibility in the end. So basically what it's going to do is give us a little bit wider of an interval than the Z interval would, especially since we're dealing with a smaller sample size. So anytime you don't know the population standard deviation, but you know the sample standard deviation, then you are going to create a T interval for the mean. The other two conditions that you must have is you always have to have a random sample. And this is something that different textbooks give different conditions. Um, you do want to make sure that you have a random sample and that each person is independent of another person. And um, you also want to make sure that the central limit theorem can kick in. And in order for that to kick in, remember that you either have to have a sample size that is greater than or equal to 30, or you have to have a normally distributed population. So because it says normally distributed, we have all of the information that we can that we need. Um, so we can go ahead and continue with the T interval. It's always important to make sure that you can actually use the interval. So that's why the conditions are there. For this, I'm going to go ahead and list out all of the important information that we need from this. Um, we need the number in the sample. So in this case, we have 20 people. So that would be our number in our sample. We need the sample mean. So X bar, if we look at this, was 33.7 minutes. We need the sample standard deviation, and the sample standard deviation was the 6.8. Okay. Um, we also need to know our confidence level, and I had it up above. I hit it, but the confidence level for this one was 0.99. And for the T distribution, when we go to find TC or T star, depending upon how your um, textbook denotes it, you have to have the degrees of freedom. And the degrees of freedom are found by taking your sample size minus 1. So we would just do 20 minus 1, which is 19. You have to have this in order to find your critical value um, that is necessary to use the formula. So like I said, depending upon the textbook, um, I've taught from multiple textbooks and they're different in the different textbooks. So I'm gonna include two formulas. They both are the same thing, they're just written differently. So the first formula is more of a condensed version. It's just saying that you take the sample mean plus or minus um, the margin of error, which is found by doing T star times s divided by the square root of n. 
And T star, um, they may also put a degrees of freedom down here. Um, there's a lot of notations. That's one thing that I have found is that statistics textbooks are not very consistent in their formulas. Um, but this is just your critical value, the value that we get from our T distribution table with a certain number of degrees of freedom. The other formula that I have seen textbooks use is X bar minus E. This is the one that my current textbook uses, um, where the population mean is in between the sample mean minus the margin of error. That's what the E represents is the margin of error. Um, and your plus E, so like when you're listening to the news, if they say within um, plus or minus three or something like that, that's the error part. That's the values because we know that most of the time the sample mean is not the same as the population mean. That's why we give a range of values for the population mean. And for this, E is found by doing T, and this one uses TC times S divided by the square root of N. The TC and the T star with degrees of freedom, they mean the same thing. It's just different notations, um, different authors have different um, things that they like to use. So um, I just went ahead and included both of them so that you guys can find these. For this, let's find our TC or our T star, however your textbook writes it. So what we would do is I'm going to pull up a T table. So this is a T table. It's different from the normal table, because in the normal table, you only have one model. In the T table, you have different models depending upon the degrees of freedom. So for this, what we are going to do is up here it lists, um, these are for hypothesis tests, and yours may look slightly different. Some of them have the one tail, two tail, and the confidence level all listed at the top. Um, this one has the confidence level listed at the bottom. So what we would do is we would find the 99% confidence. So this is the column that we are going to use. And then we would find our degrees of freedom, which was 19. And we would go over here and it tells us for 99% confidence that we would use 2.861. So this is our critical T value that we would use. If you notice, if we have a smaller sample size, like if I only have a sample of size 2, my critical value is 63.66. So it starts out very large because when you have a small sample size, it differs very much from the actual population. The larger your sample size is, um, the more accurate your answer is going to be. And so eventually this T model does approach the normal distribution or the z-score. So the z-score is the very bottom and eventually your normal or your T distribution will just become the normal distribution. So again what we needed was the 2.861 from this table. So we would write that down and now it's just a matter of plugging it in. The hardest part of this is knowing which confidence interval formula you're going to use. There are a lot of different formulas um, so let's just plug in our information. I'm going to use this one just because it's shorter to write out. Um, so we would take the 33.7 plus or minus, and then we would plug in our T star, which is 2.861. And we would plug in our sample standard deviation, which is 6.8, divided by the square root of your sample size, which is 20. Make sure that you use the true sample size and not the degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom are used to find this only. Um, and then you would just plug this into your calculator. So when you plug it into your calculator, you would just do 33.7 minus 2.861 times the 6.8 divided by the square root of 20. And that would give you your lower value, which I already calculated. Um, for us, I ended up with 29.3498. And then to get the upper, we would just go back in and type in the 33.7 plus 2.861, and then type it in parentheses 6.8 divided by the square root of 20. If you put it in exactly how it's written, again, you do have to separate it into the plus and minus. So if this is confusing to you, just write it out like this. And then that way, you know what you have to plug into your calculator. Either way, you end up with the same thing. 
Um, so if I got this, it would be 38.0502. And as always, it's important to make sure that you know how to interpret this. So we would say with 99% confidence. So whatever level of confidence that you are going to be using is how you start. Um, we can say the mean commute time to work for this population is between 29.3498 and 38.0502 minutes. Okay, so this is what we would report back is that we found that based on our sample, it appears that the mean commute time is somewhere between 29.3 minutes and 28.05 minutes. Um, remember that what a confidence interval does is 99%, if this was done an infinite number of times from this population, 99% of the intervals will contain the true mean. As always, thanks for watching.